Hello YouTubers and subscribers and pals and everybody else. I promised you in the last video, the one that I did on this Duluth pack, and while I'm putting on my kit away, what I thought I'd do is I thought I would I'm gonna be able to turn the light on so it can see. I thought I would uh, discuss axes with you just just really briefly and um, there have been colossal amounts of um, reviews done on axes and especially the Granfus Brooks which tends to be the one that, that bushcrafters favour. Not in all cases because I know some like the Wetterlings and some like the um, the other one which the name escapes me and some of you like the Fiskers ones and the Gerber axes and one thing or another which is fair enough and I'm not selling any products I'm not trying to big up anybody um, I'm just kind of speaking as I find. Um, axes are a very personal thing. I think they're a very noble tool and I think they're a very useful tool and if it came down to it, you know, one one's not really much better than the other. It's a piece of steel that's sharpened on a piece of stick, really. Um, I do like tomahawks. I like the Pathfinder Hawk, which I've tried to order a few times, but they're always out of stock. Um, I do like the Cold Steel Hawks. They've got some good hawks. Uh, and I do have a, a Polax, which I bought from the canteen shop, which is a way of being, uh, having some work done on it. Um, but let's talk about Grantsford Brooks Axes and the three that, that I kind of know about and the, the three that are, are kind of most popular. This is the Wildlife or Wilderness Hatchet, which most of you will either have come across or may have started your you know your your affair with uh, Grandsfus Brooks axes. Um, I've got to say I bought this one um, basically to keep in the truck, but uh, it made its way inside. Cut some cut some kindling for the for the stove downstairs. Um, excellent axe. My little man likes to use it and you know likes to help cut the kindling. Um, did para paracord wrap it after I saw a video that Mike Dixon did from Stone Age Bush, Bushcraft about protecting your your health of your axe which I thought was a, a really good idea and it, it's you know it's sensible um, good you know good forged carbon steel um, with grounds for Brooks axes as I'm sure you're aware the the maker always puts his initials on and I think MM is either uh, I think it's I think the guy's called Matthias or Matthias but again, stand to be corrected. Um, that's a, a funky little axe. It's it's good for young people to use. It, it's it's very light in the hand, you know, and it comes with a the standard leather leather head cover. Um, now, Grandfather Brooks say you can put that strap round your belt and carry that quite comfortably. Um, I I don't know I don't know about that. I usually took it in my belt down down my back. So if I fall forward, it's not you know it's not going to stick in my back. But um, these aren't cheap. You know these aren't cheap. And and out of all the axes, I think this is one of the most expensive because it's. I think you pay for having things in miniature. As with more things, you pay pay to have in miniature. You, you would have thought it would have been uh, cheaper with it being smaller, but not. But that's a good axe. If you're only ever going to have one axe, then um, I probably wouldn't buy that one just if you're only going to have one axe. Uh, and I bought that one when I had some cash on it, and but I don't really use it, so um, that might have to go on eBay at some point. Um, the axe that's kind of eponymous and the the one that that most use, you know, if you're a fan of this, is the small forest axe. Um, uh, this is made by the same guy actually, the MM guy, Matthias, I think he's called. Um, this is the axe. This is, I mean, I've had this a long time. I, I, I got these when they first sort of came, came popular um, when, you know, Mr. Mears started waving their flag. But um, you can't, you can't take it away from the quality of the product. It's a good product. You know, the the hicker is really good. Um, the the heads are, are excellent. They're really well shaped. They're taking edge really well. Um, the last time I sharpened this, I put a ding in it. You can't see, but I took a chip out of it. I was uh, splitting some wood, and I, I went through, went through into the earth, and hit a piece of quartz, and took a chunk out of the blade. But um, I used the. Um, I've got a little folding Kershaw diamond sharpener, and spent just ten minutes. Just took it out, and it, you know, got its sharp edge back. Um, this isn't as 
isn't as long, just as long as the... Uh, no, sorry, this is just a bit longer than the hunting axe, which I showed you in my previous video, but I'll dig that one out and just put them up side by side so you can have a look. Um, the hunting axe, which is the one that I, I use most, oops, um, as you can see, the size-wise, yeah, there's, there's not a great deal in it. The... Gransfus Brooks hunting axe, if you can see, we'll put them side by side, has got a round polished pole, uh, whereas the uh, small forest axe has got a square pole. Now, driving stakes into ground, into soft earth, and maybe knocking wood wedges into timber, then I would say fair dues. But smacking another axe with it to knock an axe out, you're going to either crack one or crack both of them and bust them and then you've got a chunk of money broke and lost and you know all that can lead to is unhappiness, misery, uh, wittering from your good lady when you wanted to take money out of their camp to buy a new axe so don't do it. The hunting axe which is which would be my preference of any axe um, as you can see it's a hickory handle this axe uh, won a design award in Sweden um, for its design and uh, one will discuss that. The head is very reminiscent of the old trade axe head or the tomahawk head which I do like, you know, being a tomahawk fan, I do like it. Um, the, 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 the handle or the, the helve is very very wide near the neck and I'll discuss that in a minute um, and I don't know if the, the camera can pick that up but there's a series of concentric rings from about about a quarter of the way up and the the reason for that is the the designers of this axe decided that a smooth hickory handle if you are dressing a deer out or dressing an elk out or a bear or a boar or whatever because it was designed for the Swedish hunters and the Swedish hunting people or the Sami people um, they did realize that you could slide your sticky hand either onto the blade or off the blade and drop the axe causing damage so that's a, an excellent thing I think that's an excellent idea um, this is what's called a, a polished what what's called a polished pole or pole depending where you come from that's a hammer pole or a pole depending where you come from and you've all heard the term pole axed as in you know a pole axed that deer or went out and got poleaxed well that's where it comes from a polax or a polax generally what a, what a polax is and when i get mine back from sharpening i'll show you is is a, a tomahawk with a hammer head on a bit like a rifle hawk if you've seen the cold steel rifle hawk it's very much like that but this is a polished pole or a rounded pole and that's very tactile in hand it's as you can see it's polished and it's shiny if the if the light can pick that up and what that's for is when you are taking the skin away from the meat of a of a of a an elk or a reindeer or a, a red stag fallow buck a bear a boar a boar whatever you're using it for the way i was taught to 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 skin a beast out was you started very very gently pulling the skin apart and then of course you get your hand in and you start pulling the skin apart but of course it does leave sinew on so you trim that a little bit but once you've got the pelt or the the skin that you're trying to get on basically what how i was taught is you get your knuckles in and you go up the pelt like that taking the taking the skin out and then it comes away and then basically it's just like taking the the beast's coat off it's like taking the beast jacket off if you use the hammer pole then what you can do is if the beast's hanging, if you've got hanging on what's called a gambrel, which is basically like a big W-shaped piece of stainless steel on a hook, uh, either in the ladder or if you hang it from a tree, if you're going to field dress the beast out, then yes, you can. Yeah, I mean, you can do the whole thing with this axe because the way it's designed is you can hold it like that. So you can hold it like a pen. Or if you want to hold it the other way, you can hold it that way and cut the cut into the meat that way what I tend to do is start with the knife and then go in with the axe and use the axe like a pen and then use my fingertip to guide the sharp edge or the sharp corner of the axe into the meat so you can get into the meat like that and then once you've peeled the meat back you can this is why it's called a hammer um, a sh a, 
They are hammer poles, but it's called a, a this is a polished pole rather than just a, a flat hammer pole. You can what's called hammer the hammer the flesh. And basically all you do is you get your polished rounded pole into the flesh and you just hammer it away while you're playing and then you can get some more purchase on the the end of the the end of the uh, um, axe handle and start going in like that and pull the skin off. Um, like I said, the the hunter's axe did win an award in uh, in Sweden. It was a design award, I think. Um, I, it, and it does discuss it. If you ever get a chance to read the axe book that comes with Grant's first Brooks axes, it's quite a good read actually. It goes into the history of axe making and one thing or another. And I think they now do. Um, a, a, a tour around, you know, like you could go and visit and and have a tour around and see the axes being made, and of course that's a a selling point for Grandfather Brooks because then they better stitch an axe into you before you leave. But um, excellent axes, I've never had one fail, I've never had any problems with them. The uh, the head to wood fit is always excellent, um, and they do. I mean, when I was in engineering, I was taught to fix fix axes like that, put a wood wedge in, and then put a a metal brace across or a metal pin or wedge across there and then it's like belt and braces it's double bubble you've you've got you've got the the um, wedge forcing the timber that way and then you've got the the other the metal wedge either forcing it across or across the grain and then they finish off some of them aren't finished off too good and i have seen some some that have come out of the factory that have obviously uh, that have obviously missed the the quite stringent excuse me the quite stringent um quality control that they do have but I really do like them and if you're gonna buy one axe chances are if you're gonna buy one axe then you would buy the small forest axe now I know Ray Mears is a uh, some people think he's a joke some people don't like him some people think he's God some people you know take everything he says as gospel some people take everything he says as you know with a pinch of salt I I am I'm, I'm sort of I'm on fence really. He says a lot of good things and he does a lot of work for you know for 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 kind of underdog. But again, so does Bear Grylls. You know, he's he's. Uh, I know a lot of people take Mick out of him and he, you know he eats his own feces and drinks his own pee and all that sort of stuff, which. You know, he's chief scout now. I don't really think that's that's the example he should be setting. And I read his book while I was on holiday, and I kind of went into reading it with an open mind. Now, the guy's one of the youngest guys that's ever cl climbed Everest, so you can't take that away from him. And he does go on about being in special forces and one thing or another, but yeah, he wasn't SES, but he were in the territorial SES, he were in the reserves. Now, not taking that away because from anybody, I don't think I could do it. And I don't think even when I was fit, I could have done it. So you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having a go at him. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, I've seen, I've seen videos of him eating snakes and, you know, eating bugs and stuff. And, and chance of him getting salmonella and one thing or another, a phenomenal. And you know, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a, a role model. Kids look up to him. My little man's in cubs, you know, and takes everything that Bear Grylls says as, as gospel. I know some people are like that with Amy is that you know they take everything he says as gospel. But with Amy is he's learnt from ground up and he's learnt from the people who know the stuff. He's learnt from, from Sami, he's learnt from, you know, Zulu tribes, he's learnt from indigenous people all over. So, you know, yeah, I've read his books and I've subscribed to his channel and, you know, I bought a kit from his store and one thing or another and I, I he seems a great guy. I went I went to the um he did a thing in Leeds, like a uh, like a an evening with Ray Mears and talked about travelling and you know kit and one thing other. And he was really good. He was a really interesting fella. You know, was willing to sign autographs and you know guys like that. We've put him where he is. You know, you know buying his books and his kit and subscribing to his to his mantra and one thing other. So I, I think I think you know I'm like I say I'm I'm sort of I'm on fence with it. You know. I, I, if I'd spent if I spent time with Guy, then I'd, I'd probably you know probably change. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Ray's got a lot of sway, I think, at Grantsford Brooks, and he's um, designed an axe called the Ray Mears axe, uh, which is a bit longer and a bit heftier than the small forest axe or the Swedish forest axe. And I had a look at one um, at a 
trade show not so long ago and it looked a nice piece of kit but he uh, Ray knocks about the guy called Lars Felt who does the who is the sort of survival guru for Sweden and does all the Swedish survival training for the army and the air force and one thing or another and I think the three of them Grandsforce Brooks Ray Mears and Grant and um, Lars Felt designed another axe which is very similar to this but it's got a straight handle much like a tomahawk and it's got a metal shroud there and it's called the Grand Grandsfuss Brooks Outdoors Axe and it's kind of between it's kind of the it's kind of the bastard child of that that and the the um, small forest axe now to me if I was going down this road again I would buy that axe I, I love the forest, I love the uh, hunter's axe because, you know, I am a hunter. That's what I do for a living. That's what pays my bills and pays my mortgage. And that, to me, was made for me. And it, it's a fantastic piece of kit. But if I was going to buy another axe, not being able to get a Pathfinder Trailhawk, which I can't get because they, they never have them in stock. Uh, and I've tried getting one from Two Hawks who make them for, for the Pathfinder uh, and they're always out of stock as well so uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe chop my my wild wildlife hatchet in on eBay and sell it and then I might buy the um, I might buy the outdoor axe but you know that's probably quite a, quite a, quite a well down the line because I only ever use this really, uh, and this kind of does all I need. So might just be another, might just be another thing that I, I buy and never use. So maybe, maybe it's a lot bother. I don't know. Um, so axes, a, a phenomenal tool if they're used properly. If you don't know how to use an axe, there are plenty of DVDs. There are plenty of videos on YouTube which shows you how to do it. Um, the Cubs Scouts, Queen Scouts, Venture Scouts, Ranger Scouts uh, among you will have been taught when you did your Scout Standard and your Advanced Scout Standard have been taught how to carry an axe, how to hold axe, how to use an axe. Um, but they are, you know, they are a tool that will bite you. You know, if you don't know how to use it and if you mess about with them, then you know, start throwing them into lumps of timber and uh, you know, trying to cut matchsticks with them and which was a which was a game we played in scouts which maybe we shouldn't have done um you know they will bite you so uh you know again i'm not endorsing grants Foss brooks products i'm not paid by them it's just that they make a good product that has gone worldwide it uh, worldwide worldwide it's gone viral people love them um and gotta speak as you find i've never had any any problems at all with them and you know i've used one probably two or three days a week for the last five years uh, and you know kept up to them and looked after them so um, well worth the money if you're going to invest but what I would say is do some research before you buy one don't just go and buy the Scandinavian forest axe or the small forest axe whatever it's called what you know whatever moniker it goes by now um, I don't think you'd ever go far wrong with the axe um, it's a f fantastic piece of kit and um, it will last your lifetime if you look after it. If you keep it oiled, if you keep the you know keep the the the, uh, the axe head cover oiled and um, polished, don't think you'll have any any problems at all. Um, but there are other products out there, you know that that some people the 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 Hulter Fours, That's the one I was thinking about. The Hulter Fours axe. Um, I think they're all pretty much of a muchness, but um, it's one of those you pay your money, you take your choice. So so guys, axes. Um, there's not really much to say if you if you've got them and use them and you love them great if you don't and you know a tomahawk fan then fine if you're a parang or machete fan fine um i'm just sort of trying to give you my uh, my ramblings and my uh, my uh, you know benefit of my experience so um right guys um like comment and subscribe if you've got any problems if you don't like it please tell me why you don't like it and then i can i can obviously change the format um still complaining about the weather it's friday evening um it's still lying down with rain uh getting fed up want to be out indoors want to be out in the woods but um sick and tired of getting wet through and peeling wet kit off and my missus is sick and tired of washing wet kit so uh, i think what we'll do is might have a bit of a takeaway on tonight and maybe a, a few tins of ale and um 
relax over the weekend. So, uh, oh, clay shooting on Sunday. So we're going clay shooting on Sunday. So hopefully, if it's not raining, we might do that. Right, guys. Thank you very much. I uh, I do hope you're all safe, and I hope to see you in the woods somewhere soon. All right. Take care. Bye bye.